Hi, this is Mr. Anderson, and today I'm going to show you how to draw a Lewis dot diagram. Lewis dot diagrams uh, are going to look like this. So if we start with cesium, cesium is a metal. Um, it's got an atomic number of 55, but it's in the first column, and so that makes it really easy on the periodic table. That means it has one valence electron. Cesium has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d10, 5p6, 6s1. It has one valence electron. So if I had to draw its, its uh, Lewis dot diagram, it would look like this. You're going to have CS for the atomic symbol of cesium. Then you're going to have one dot, and that represents one valence electron. Now that one valence electron makes it really, really reactive. And so if you mix cesium with water, let's take a look at this video. Let's try cesium, our fifth alkali metal. You get a huge explosion, and the reason you get that huge explosion is due to that one valence electron. Uh, if we look on the periodic table, the first thing you want to, and you'll keep jumping back to the periodic table over and over and over again, so just get used to that. Um, so if we look at it, the first thing that jumps out is that there are these, this verticality. In other words, all of these alkali metals right here have the same properties, and that's because they all have one valence electron. And so learn this right away, that there are one valence electron in the first column, two valence in the next one, so this would be three, and four, and five, and six six, and seven, and eight. So all of these, you probably know this, these are called the noble gases, are very stable, and that's because they have eight valence electrons. Whereas these alkali metals and these halogens right here are incredibly unstable, and then we have kind of a combination in the middle. What you, what you just noticed is that I ignored all of these, the transition metals, and their electron configurations are a little more complex. But please learn this right away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons. You can't do Lewis dot diagrams unless you know how many valence electrons they have. So let's start with the first one. This is my method. I um, can't remember where I picked this up, but first thing I do is I, in my brain, I draw crosshairs across the uh, symbol. So we're going to do neon. Let's jump back again to the periodic table. Where's neon? Neon's going to be way over here. Here's neon. And so it's going to have how many valence electrons? Eight. So let's do the biggest one right away eight valence electrons. So again, I've drawn this in my head. I have this crosshair. So I'm just going to start putting in electrons like this. So here's one valence electron, seven to go. Here's two, three, four. Now, it doesn't matter if I start on the top or if I start on the right or the bottom. It doesn't matter. But once I choose a place to start, I have to either go clockwise or counterclockwise and keep going from there. So let's go again. One, two, three, four. Now I've got to put five right here. This is six. This is seven, and then this is going to be eight. So the Lewis dot diagram for neon is going to put, we could just do these all in right here. It's going to look just like that. So neon is very stable. It had its, its outer energy level, the second, filled with electrons. Let's go to the next one, hydrogen. Hydrogen, you should know, has one valence electron. So where is that going to go? Right here. Now I put hydrogen and helium at the top because their rules are a little bit different. Because remember, the periodic table looks the way it does because these first two elements, hydrogen and helium, can only have two valence electrons in that outer energy level. But helium, instead of going around clockwise, it can only have two in that outer level. And so this would be the correct Lewis dot structure for that. Let's go do some more. So silicon is going to have four valence electrons. If you don't know, you just check on the periodic table. So it's going to have one, two, three, and four. Or lithium only has one, so it's going to have one periodic, one uh, valence electron or one Lewis dot. Let's go to carbon. Carbon is the same group as silicon, so it's going to have four as well. If we're doing oxygen, how many does oxygen have? Oxygen has six valence electrons, and so if I had to draw that again, imagining those crosshairs in my brain, one, two, three, four, then here's the fifth, and then here's the six. So how many electrons would it like to pick up? Two more. Or if we go to nitrogen, nitrogen has five valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five. Step one for drawing any electron dot diagram is by identifying the number of valence electrons that are present in each of the atoms. If I consider NH3, nitrogen is in group 15. It's going to have five valence electrons. 
Start by drawing your central atom, or the atom that comes first, and we're going to place the five valence electrons around the nitrogen. And pair those electrons up. Nitrogen has now a lone pair, two electrons together, and the three electrons that are singly paired. My hydrogens now get drawn in. Hydrogen is in group one, so it's going to have one valence electron. It's going to get its one dot. Our last step is to now pair those single electrons up and drawing in those bonds. Remember that each bond represents two shared electrons. This is our structure for ammonia. It's Let's do water. Let's start with oxygen, which has six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's add some hydrogen then. Hydrogen each has one. We have a total of, let's see, six plus two is eight valence electrons. Now we have hydrogen. Hydrogen has one. Hydrogen has one. These two are going to be shared, and I have a bond. I have a total of eight electrons. Each bond is two. Let's see, two, four, six, eight. I need to be sure I have the total number of valence electrons. So we have eight. Here's water. In HCN, or hydrogen cyanide. Step one is to draw the skeleton of the molecule, or how you think it may be bonded together. In this case, it's pretty clear. We have a hydrogen, a carbon, and a nitrogen. It's written that way in the molecule for a reason. Step two is to count the number of valence electrons that HCN has. Hydrogen has one valence electron because it's in the first group. Carbon has four valence electrons because it's in the fourth group, if you don't ca count the transition metals. And nitrogen carries with it five valence electrons. In total, this molecule then will have one plus four plus five, or ten valence electrons. Which means we have ten electrons to move around this molecule in order to satisfy the next few steps. Step three is adding a bonding pair of electrons in between every two atoms. Or in this case, hydrogen and carbon need to be bonded together. So we have to put two electrons there. Carbon and nitrogen have to be bonded together. So we put two electrons there. Step four is to add the rest of your electrons to the outer atoms until they satisfy the octet rule. Hydrogen is an exception to the octet rule. It only needs two electrons around it, and it already has that, so that's done. Nitrogen, on the other hand, needs eight to satisfy the octet rule. We've already put down one, two, three, four electrons. F let's put down five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We now have ten electrons here, the number that we need in the molecule. Step five is to make sure that all of your atoms satisfy the octet rule by the end. In this case, hydrogen does, nitrogen does, but carbon does not. Carbon needs eight electrons around it. We're out of electrons. We can't just add more. We have to move some from an adjacent atom. In this case, nitrogen has plenty of electrons around it that it may be willing to share. So let's move these two electrons here. Nitrogen still has eight electrons around it, but now carbon has six. That still isn't enough for carbon. It needs two more. Let's move these two electrons in the bond as well. Nitrogen still has eight electrons around it. Two, four, six, eight. Carbon now has eight electrons around it. 2, 4, 6, 8, and hydrogen has its 2. All of the atoms satisfy the octet rule. We use the correct number of valence electrons, and this Lewis structure is done.